Alright YouTube, here's my Bronco again. Same Bronco. Um, negative results on the first test. Actually lost gas mileage. <laughs> it went from 21 and change down to 19 and change. Um, and then I turned my hydrogen off to test it again. I had it coming in here and it went back up to 21. Um, so running it in here apparently was causing computer problems. My computer was not able to understand what was going on there. As you can see I've got zero amps right now and my bubbler here is off. It was on a minute ago but it's off right now. Now I'm going to turn it on and show you what I'm doing and how I'm doing it so maybe uh, if somebody has a suggestion that might help you can see the light came on, the switch is on. Um, immediately she starts the bubbling, it's going slow right this second. You can see the water turned very brown. That is uh, distilled water with a little bit of baking soda in it. I'm not sure why it's turning so brown, but it's got a film on top that I should probably get rid of. But anyways, for I'll clean that up here in a second. It's been, this is the same water that's been running in it for a couple of days now. So, if I crank that shut, you can see my bubbler starts producing. Hopefully, you can see it. I don't know if, uh, yeah, light wise, I don't know if I could help any, but, anyways, it's producing a decent amount right there and it gets better as it goes. I have a flash suppressor in line, I have a one way check valve, which is just a valve stem don't know if that's going to do anything but it does restrict the vacuum because now I'm going to put it in, in the main vacuum line in the back of the uh, intake there and the reason I'm switching that is because well the first first way really messed it up back here I shouldn't have any interference with my computers at all and that should allow the hydrogen to completely uh, permeate the area mix with the oxygen and give me better combustion now it does run smoother when the hydrogen's on, even in here. Idles better, but you know, I don't know. Um, right now I'm at right at 20 amps, so this cheap amp meter is probably, you know, off a bit because they're it's just the cheapo. But they're the only one I could find. Um, anyways, here it is, not running. The future plan is to do a complete hydrogen motor. I think I'll do either a Volkswagen motor because I just happen to have some laying around here, or um, I'll end up buying a cheap car. And anybody knows where there's a really cheap car that I can turn into a complete hydrogen based car, let me know because I will buy it. Anyways, fire it off. You can hear it fires right off every time. The truck never let me down. I love my Bronco. And I always hated these things. It's funny. Um, you can see the vacuum there, hopefully. Sorry if it's so loud. Didn't mean to run an engine in your ear, but there you have it. I wanted to show you what was going on there. And I don't know how to zoom this stupid camera. So, uh, that's what I'm doing. This is uh, where it's at. And ultimately, that, that truck right there is what I want to run on pure hydrogen. It's got a 454 and it's a three quarter ton. And I've got to change the heads on it anyways because, uh, well, the timing chain got put on off. I had to put a new timing chain and all that kind of stuff in it. But now, when I put the new heads on there, I think I'll go with stainless steel valves um, and do some little bit of modification to the motor to give it a little bit uh, more wear and tear running hydrogen. And then uh, that's what I'm hoping to run off of pure hydrogen. That would be kind of nice. The next test after this vehicle is going to be my big diesel. Um, I have a 80s model Ford with a 7.3 in it, non-turbocharged uh, diesel motor. Just to show you, I have also a full tank of gas because this is my second test. So um, I will be doing the uh, 7.3 regardless of the outcome of this test. I know you can inject propane into a diesel motor and give yourself more power, better gas mileage, blah, 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 but propane costs. So I'm thinking hydrogen will run the same principle as propane, and uh, I would imagine that it will probably increase the uh, power and fuel economy. And like I said before, this vehicle here, this Bronco, did have 
a little bit better power, a little smoother idle on with the hydrogen in, injected there, but the gas mileage went down. Don't know exactly how that relates or anything else, but I will be finding out and figure it out. Again, uh, my name is Jeff. I'm with ASJ Enterprises. Uh, I own the company, so <laughs> it is ASJ Enterprises. Um, and uh, we do a lot of engine modification and work, so I'm testing this out, guys. Uh, I'm hoping this is going to work. If anybody has any suggestions on a better way to introduce the hydrogen to the motor for simple fuel economy, uh, let me know, and I'll be glad to have answer any questions. I did have a gentleman ask me about why you put in a relay. Um, the main reason, and I can show it on this video real quick, most of you probably know this that have been playing with stuff, but this is a relay from a KC Light. Um, bought it at AutoZone or somewhere. I don't know, I've got a million of these things laying around. But basically this line, as you can see, goes straight to the battery, to the positive of terminal on the battery. This line here goes straight to the negative, and, boy, that's a bad connection, I'll have to fix that, but this one, this thick line here, is running all the way down and comes over to the positive on my cell. It's got a 30 amp fuse in line. This line goes to that switch that's in the dash that I showed you earlier. And when you put introduce power to a relay on one side, it opens up the connection between your battery and ultimately what you want to give power to, keeping the main draw from going through, oh, say, a fuse block and melting it, which I have seen people do. Um, these are really cheap. I think I paid like $3 for this one or something a year ago or so. I mean, I've got a ton of them laying around because they, they are cheap, and I use them all the time. Um, in addition to this, I just teed into this the main line coming in here, and this is going right before my fuel cell. And that runs, this line here goes back up into the dash, and this is what runs the light, which lets me know that I'm getting power to the cell. It doesn't really tell me if the cell's producing anything, of course, but it does tell me that I have power coming from right here. And I just teed off of it. It'll, that little light's not going to use up any, any voltage or anything, any, really. Not, nothing consequential, anyway. Um, also, one other thing I wanted to point out to a lot of the naysayers, uh, regardless if this works or not, the alternator is putting out the power. You know, I, uh, I think where the confusion came in is a lot of people said, well, it's free energy. Well, of course it's not free. You know, you, you've, you're using water, which costs, and you're using power. But what you're doing is um, you're using energy that is already there for you. You know, your, your alternator could only produce just enough for your engine to run. Then when you turn on your headlights, well, you'd lose gas mileage. Or, you know, if you turned on your heater and turned the fan on on your heater, you'd lose gas mileage because it's, using, it's drawing on the, the alternator. Well, that's simply not true. Your alternator's already producing, or generator, whatever you're driving, depending on what you have and how old it is, is already producing the electricity. Whether or not you use it or not is up to you. And that's why, you know, you can still run the same, you know, like say a 75 amp alternator on these newer cars with a million little gadgets on them, power windows and door locks and cruise and tilt, and which this one all happens to have, but, um, and computers and relays, is simply because you're already using all of this, the, the power is already there to be used. It's ready to be tapped. And that's what people are saying about the water. The power is there and ready to be tapped. We're just not using it. So as far as you losing gas mileage because of a power draw, that's just ridiculous. Um, it won't, you, you already have it there, and you're just tapping into it. Um, and that's about all I have to say about that. I, I just read some of the comments, and I just wanted to fall over laughing. But, uh, you know, don't turn your headlights on. You'll lose a mile per gallon type thing, you know. <laughs> But um, it should run good, and I do know I have more power, regardless of my gas mileage. Hopefully this will work correctly, and um, I'm thinking, again, when I introduced it here, that it did mess with my computer. You know, the sensors that I have in this engine were picking something up. Um, it would probably be better to do this kind of a test on a simple motor that has carburation and, and uh, vacuum advance type thing. Um, but... I don't have one at my hand in my hands. So for right now that's what I'm using and
Good luck to all, and I've enjoyed your comments, and, and we'll see how this goes. Thanks. Bye.